chop, the chop, you can sink your teeth into. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> it's going to be very important for me to say straight up front, full disclosure, if you will, I have never, ever played this game. I have looked at some of the cards, but I have never played the game. Don't really know any of the characters and certainly do not know, nor was I cognizant of, any of the plots, subplots, or machinations of this game before I went to the press screening. Perhaps that is a good thing. There were two guys when everything was over and people were leaving the theater who were standing at the bottom near the floor and they were arguing about Easter eggs that had shown up in the movie and allusions to uh, things that happened in the game. I was totally oblivious to all of this. I had no idea what they were talking about, but they were quite serious about them. I don't think it mattered. And I think perhaps not knowing anything may have enhanced my enjoyment of the movie. Because I had a great time with this one. It was an awful lot of fun. Cinematic Glass is about to begin. Your professor. Yes, sir. Greetings, salutations, and other sundry affair. I am your cinematic professor and purveyor of truth in movies. And tonight's lesson plan, of course, is Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. I had a good time during this. I laughed my butt off. I really did. And I know that upsets a lot of people sometimes when I say that because they're so serious about this game. This game is important. It is what the entire world revolves around. It's a game, all right? So they made a nice little quirky comedy out of the whole thing and put it in this movie, and I just I had a blast with it. It all comes from a team of ragtag would-be warriors who decide to go on a rather epic journey. Okay. Oh, I got a good feeling about this. Dungeons and Dragons is that classic hero's journey about a ragtag group of misfits. Where we have to fight dragons and evil wizards in order to save the world. So how do we pull that off? Uh, Figure it out over a drink? Probably best. You need it's about finding your own hero within. Ah! And each character has their own version of that journey. I don't mind that. Oh, we got him now! What's it exactly that you bring to this? I'm a planner. I make plans. I will not be complicit in the illicit use of ill-gotten booty. Can someone else ride next to this guy? I think there's a wicked sense of humor through this, and that allows us to have as much fun with this as we can. Keep still. I'm glad he's on our side. The nuances that each individual actor brings is what makes this film so great. This I give you now, trusting that you'll protect it with your very life. I will. Hold this. I'm part of the ruthless band of thieves, but he's not as evil as the Red Wizard. Never put your trust in a con man. Let's go! The Dungeons & Dragons world has amazing creatures. In this one, I think they outdid themselves. These creatures are insane. You really can tell they put a lot into this. What is that again? An owl back. This is just big, fun movie making. 
It's a great adventure with characters that you're going to care about. We want to give them the movie that they've been hoping for. That's what I've been saying! Yeah, it's pretty badass. Okay, there are some really some uh, uh, interesting characters in this. Uh, but but they're playing pretty much. Chris Pine is in this. And, uh, um, you know... For a while there, he was playing these characters that were very serious action uh, uh, heroes, uh, including his version of, of Captain Kirk. But uh, the last couple of movies, he's kind of lightened up a little bit. And this is the, uh, I think, his his peak, if you will, of playing a character that's kind of nonchalant and uh, a little bit on the more on the humorous side than on the series. Michelle Rodriguez is in there. You know, I, I've always uh, spoke highly of Michelle. I like her. I think she is one of the few actresses who can really pull off an action role, uh, especially one made for a woman. She's done it exceptionally well. I gotta say, uh, you know, I understand Michelle's getting a little older, but it looks like she's putting on a little bit of poundage, too. All right? There were a couple of times watching this movie, I pulled back and said, whoa! Oh, you're just kind of barely fitting in there. Don't get me wrong. She looks fine. She looks fine. But she looks like she's sporting a little more beef to her uh, than she has in the past. There are, you know, this is a world, because it's a fantasy, this is a world where it, everybody's, it's multicultural, it's eclectic, it's diverse. And everybody gets along. That it doesn't work that way, kids. No matter what you might think, you know. And that's why the the current progressives in power are trying to put us all into tribes and single us all out and put us into cliques so that we can war with each other. But not here. Here, everybody gets along. Everything is fine. And the only things you have to worry about are the universal problems with people like greed and the seven deadly sins. Basically, is what you have to what you have to worry out for. In all, there's rather an interesting cast of characters. The games have started. Ah! And get is a bard. The bard is sharp. We have a plan D if plan C fails. Ah! He's charming and likable. Ah! Oh, God, I could kiss you. Try it. Volga is a barbarian, lives to fight foes and everyone else. Ah! Luckily, you can't make her angry. Because she's already angry. Simon is a sorcerer, master of magic. Perumon Tergatis. Maybe I'm not saying it. Doric is a druid, changes shapes on the outside. But stays the same on the inside. Zank is a paladin, a warrior so fierce, and he can afford to be polite. Jankly? Jankly to you as well, good sir. He's interesting. Forge is a rogue. Trust him once, shame on you. Keep her safe. You have my word. Trust him twice. I don't want to see you die, which is why I'm going to leave the room. Let's go! And then we have the Red Wizard. Powerful and ruthless. The last face you want to see. Ah! And now you are ready to go out and see Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. He must have found a new den. Did he eat the last one? Okay, so in the last segment, I, I picked on Michelle a little bit because she looked like she was putting on a little bit of weight. And she still looks good. Don't get me wrong. You know. I, I still wine and diner, <laughs> but yeah, it follows the theme of this movie because it's Dungeons and Dragons. So you expect dragons to be well. When we get a dragon, this dragon is described by uh, by Chris Pine no less as pudgy. <laughs> this thing had me rolling in the aisles. I don't know if it's in the game, but it was funny as hell. This dragon is a big pork or fat slob of a dragon. He's lucky he can walk. He's stumbling all over everything. I mean, it was just it was just a howl. I, I just thought, 
you know, at first I thought, ah, that's you shouldn't do that, to dragons. But then I, it was just too damn funny not to, not to like. There are a lot of creatures in this movie. They look good. What creatures will you meet when you go see the new movie, Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves? No, oh, that's not good. Will there be an owlbear? What is that again? The mashup that somehow pairs all of the terror with none of the cute from owls and bears. We're mimics, monsters that can pose as anything. Will there be a gelatinous cube that disarms its victims? How about a displacer beast? A predator with tentacles and cloaking abilities and... Well, I mean, isn't that more than enough? Or an intellect devourer. A giant brain that consumes other brains, like some kind of awful brain cannibal. The higher the intelligence of the prey, the more likely they are to strike. Oh, well, that's a little hurtful. Or even Thumberjot, the red dragon who looks like he ate all the other dragons as appetizers. As I said, I had an awful lot of uh, fun with this one. It's, it's, it's a fantasy uh, comedy, if you will. And anytime you do that, you know, you have to have stereotypical uh, uh, mores. So we naturally have our ragtag team of misfits against decided evil, okay? So you get this good and you get this evil thing. A little little sketch on the evil thing. You know, one of the main sorceresses, I, uh, you know, I had a hard time accepting her as something evil and gnarly. The special effects helped an awful lot. How are we gonna pull this off? We're gonna need a team. You don't have to know anything about Dungeons and Dragons to get into this story. So the characters are a group of petty thieves. We helped the wrong person steal the wrong thing. We didn't mean to unleash the greatest evil the world has ever known. But we're gonna fix it. I'm a con man. I team up with Safina as the dreaded Red Wizard. Red Wizards created an army of the undead to conquer the nation. Such immense evil. And they were so incredibly powerful. You know not the scope of my power! Just an amazing thing to have these bandits coming together, trying to save the world. It's pretty badass. It's a hero's journey of good against evil. This ends now. Whatever happens, we'll be ready. So what I'm going to tell you about here is, is Guy Ritchie. All right. They said, Professor, what does Guy Ritchie have to do with Dungeons and Dragons? Absolutely nothing. All right. But I want to make an analogy here. Um, I like Guy Ritchie films. And I think I alluded to that when I did the review of uh, his latest movie, Operation Fortune. And uh, what is nice is that he takes this action and he, he surrounds it with humor and sometimes silliness, but always very quirky dialogue that's kind of snarky. Okay, And, and I really enjoy that. And this movie does that. So I feel like it's made in the in the uh, uh, mean of a Guy Ritchie film, except where Guy Ritchie makes his films for adults, this is definitely made for kids. And now, it's time to peel back the veils of time and go back to the early Cretaceous period for the nation's first and only prehistoric film critic, Rex. If you are a diehard Dungeons and Dragons fan, you may have a totally different outlook on this movie than I did. 
I knew nothing about it other than occasionally looking at some of the cards saying, oh, that's a neat dragon or that's a neat monster. That, that was it for me. Okay, so I enjoyed this movie immensely. It's it's is a juvenile. Sure, it's meant for uh, kids. Kids can go see this, and there's no problem with it. I just thought this the whole thing what was humorous. It was funny, and uh, it mixed a lot of the sword and sorcery things with. Uh, it never takes itself serious. And could it be the launch of a franchise or a series? Yeah, I think it could because it was really an awful lot of fun and now that you have learned what you have learned here endeth your lesson okay simon how does this work all right once the dead man is revived we can ask him five questions at which point he will die again mm -hmm. never to be re-revived five five questions I don't know, that's just how it works. It seems arbitrary. Can we get on with this, please? Right, yes. Perlamon Tergatis. Maybe I'm not saying it right. <laughs> I wasn't scared, nearly startled. Here we go. Were you killed in the Battle of the Everhorse? Yes. Great. I mean, uh, not for you. Sorry for your loss. Four more questions, right? Yes. No, 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 that, that wasn't for you. Did that count as a question? Yes. Damn it. Only answer when I talk to you, okay? Yes. Why did you say okay at the end of that? I didn't. Fantastic. Where's the shovel? 